Hey everyone, Kyle once again. And welcome back to another uh, movie review. And reviewing another Walt Disney animated film. Um, now, I'm sure this is a film that, a, a Walt Disney animated film, I'm sure but probably nobody ever talks about it anymore. It's probably one of those uh, forgotten ones, probably. I don't know much if anyone else has ever talked about this movie ever, so, well... Probably because the film bombed and, well, it, bombed, it, it was a huge box office flop. So, but looking back on this film, seen it a couple of times a while back then, you know, a while back. Um, probably because it's a, it's a Western, it's a Western animated movie. Because a lot of times Western films, even if it was animated, bomb. So, but I think it's I think it's still a decent, still a decent, still a decent uh, film. Like my previous review, I think Ferdinand was decent, and I think this film is decent. I think I think it still is, and that is uh, from two thousand from two thousand four. So another one. So like it came this two thousand four the same year that came of the iRobots that I reviewed so another fifth so fifteenth anniversary say two thousand four twenty nineteen so another fifteenth anniversary film and that is of Home on the Range it's another one I've wanted to review for some time as well so yeah but Home on the Range of course the song you know Home all oh, Home on the Range where the deer and the antelope will play yeah. Home on the Range. And the film came out in April 2004. And the film didn't do that well. This film cost $110 million. Domestically, it made about 50 some million Worldwide, 103 So the film was a huge box office flop. And, well, it shows because it shows that Disney is not perfect with anime films. So it's still have a, they've had a couple of flops. So... But this one was a huge flop, and now with the film, it was given when it came out. It was given mixed reviews. It does have a 53% of Rotten Tomatoes, and has a 5.7 I think on IMDb. I will say though, that it is a short movie without end credits. It's about 76 minutes, so without end credits, it's blessed probably about 70 minutes, give or take. So practically like an hour and ten minutes, basically. But uh, so it is a short movie, and the film is directed by uh, Will Finn, which this guy has worked on a lot of Disney on a lot of Disney animated films. He's an animator and a uh, uh, story uh, storyboard artist. He's and and as well as an animator, he's worked on stuff like The Secret of Nim. Um, the Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, a Goofy movie, Pocahontas, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Chicken Little Over the Hedge. But as director, he directed this film, and then he directed the 2014 animated film, which was also a huge box office flop. Um, Legend of, of uh, was it The Legend of Oz: Dorothy's Return? Yeah. That was, for some reason, that film cost seventy million, and that made about twenty million. So that wasn't a huge film that I directed, and he directed this film. But it was this film cost much bigger though than Legend of Oz. So, but he's worked on a lot of Disney animated films, like like I said, Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, etc. And. The film, uh, as for as for the voice cast, I think for the voice cast was 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 decent. I mean, yeah, Ro yeah, Roseanne Barr as our main our main cow right here, Maggie. And I'm sure, like you know, many people about Ro think about Roseanne Barr, you know, from the show Roseanne, but um, and of course, people people think, which I'm not gonna get into about the whole thing about the tweet things from the new Roseanne show, the revival show. Not get into that though, because I don't talk about that stuff. So, 
But Roseanne Barr as Maggie. Then you got Judy Dench. It's been a lot of other films, including the James Bond, the James Bond films as M. But she's been in a lot of movies, but Bruce has also including the James Bond films as M. Um, then you got the course wall. You got Jeffrey Tilly, which, ty- which as I'm tired of seeing her in the Child's Play films. You know, she was on that, including her, including, but I did not, I did not like her in Bride Chucky, Cena Chucky, then Cold to her appearance at the end of uh, Curse of Chucky, then Cold to Chucky. I'm tired of seeing her in the Child's Play films. Well, like I said, I thought uh, she was decent when she voiced, um, what was her name, in uh, Monsters, Inc. So, as I said before, a certain actress is better off doing do, doing voice work. Yeah, so she was decent in Monsters, Inc., but I guess she was decent in this, though, but I didn't say much, because I, I don't care for her mo- mostly as, I don't care for her overall, especially from, starting from the, the Child's Play films. So, but here it was decent, I mean... Then you got Ursula Cassidy, you got Cuba Gooding Jr., uh, Randy Quaid, even um, Steve Buscemi has a small has a, has a small role as well. So overall, a decent cast. As as the story is that um, Maggie, voiced by, voiced by Roseanne Barr, she's this uh, county. She was a county fair cow. And she lived on this uh, ranch where the other cattle are, but um, all the other cattle were taken by a famous outlaw named Alameda Slim, voiced by Randy Quaid. And lost, so he was uh, the the owner of there, no choice but to sell him to pay wherever he has. So he gave him to this um, old lady in this farm named Patch of Paradise, where he meets some. Um, Grace and Mrs. Calloway, voiced by Jeffrey Tilly and uh, Judy Dench, and there's and there's, there's pigs on the farm, chicks, and including this this grumpy goat named Jeb, which is voiced by Joe Flattery, I think his last name is. If you don't know that, uh, he's the guy who says uh, in Happy Gilmore, the guy that uh, Christopher McDonald, Shooter McGavin, hired to to you know for Happy Gilmore to mess up in that place where he ended up getting fired with Bob Barker. You know, he's the guy. He's the one who says. Hey, Happy, you suck, you jackass. Yeah, Jack. The guy. He's the, he's the guy who calls Happy Gilmore jackass in, in Happy Gilmore. So that's the guy who voices that goat. And so she they, she gets brought to the farm. And shortly after meeting the, uh, the other two cows and have a little magic tricks with the, the chicks... Or the actually the piglets, the little pigs. The sheriff comes in, which is actually voiced by Richard Riley, who's which I I said before in other reviews, if you recognize this guy in other films, you recognize him. So he comes in to uh, which he, he has a horse named Buck, voiced by Cuba Gooding Jr. He gives the old lady um, a notice that her farm is being is being. You know, for foreclosure and had not enough money, so <sighs> if it doesn't pay up soon, it's gonna be auctioned off and lose her home. So, it, so Roseanne has a thing that she wants to probably save her farm, save the farm that uh, like try to enter a county fair, but it's not enough money because it's up to seven hundred fifty dollars. So. She has the idea that um, that get the reward by capturing Alameda Slim, which is the same amount of money. So even though Judy Dench, Judy Dench um, Mrs. Callaway, uh, doesn't agree with it, but she ends up going. She goes along with it, along with Grace. So they all uh, set out to capture him, and they have a plan like because since the Ely, um, he's a cow rustler. They have plans like to make themselves be captured, you know, become like the cow to capture, be captured with. And what else going on with Cuba Gooding Jr. as Buck? He 
eases his ego egotistical horse that, you know, wants to be the hero, and also that, um, there's this bounty hunter named Rico that he admires, he wants him to ride him, which he picks him, though, and even though he says he's fast and all that stuff, and until later, like, when, which I'll get to that, though. So he's happy, so he sets off, and while it's going while it's going on, they uh, enter this. Uh, they they walk they walk um, they walk past um, Maggie's old farm where it was uh, sold off because of due to Alameda Slam. So she wants to basically have her for revenge. <laughs> um. Until Alameda Slam and the the will the three Willie brothers show up. They um he hypnotizes all the all his, all the cattle by yodeling. So I guess he just gets his, his bad at yodeling because the the brothers mentioned like, my man, they don't like your singing. Oh, wait, right, you made your they don't like your yodeling. <laughs> well, all of them all fall into like Ma except Maggie and uh, Mrs. Calloway fall into their trance and all those other cattle except for uh. Uh, Grace, Jennifer Tilly, because I guess she, she's not affected, I guess she's like, she's, uh, she's tone deaf, I guess. So that's why she, she can resist it. And, eventually, uh, the, the cannon gets blocked off, um, the bounty hunter Rico ditches Buck for a new, for a different horse. And... Then one point where there, it rains so hard it floods, and Judy just gets mad at, at at Maggie, at Roseanne, and saying, "We'll, we'll we're gonna go our separate ways. When it stops, we go our way. You go ahead and you do you go and catch her slim then." So, by the time it stops, they meet this uh one-legged rabbit named Lucky, was Lucky Jack. Yeah, Lucky Jack, this one rabbit that has a peg leg. It could take, take, him, could take him to where Slim's hideout is in this mine. And he's been, this, he has, a, and well, his whole plan is that he has to disguise himself as one, as an auctioneer to buy all the land where he was at, I guess. Um, I forget what was the reason why he, because he was revenge against some people that didn't like his ideas, I guess. I guess that's the funny thing that um, I guess his whole plot is this, was is this cliche and all that stuff and the songs I thought were well what was that one song that was um what was the ones that those playing what was the one song keep looking at this song. Yeah, uh, Will the Sun Ever Shine Again by Bonnie Rat Wright. I was playing during that one scene. But otherwise, the songs are not that quite great. And... But they get to the mine. Um, Slim's like his buff. He rides a buffalo. He rides a buffalo. He lets the... Won't let Cuba Gooding Jr. pass, but the other three cows cause cows only. So he lets them pass easily. He's like, oh, what about the rabbits? He's with the cows. So. And. Then this, this, little, this little banker guy uh, pays him for all the cows he stole. He's voiced by Steve Bushimi. And. They have plans like, to avoid, to, like, to avoid, to avoid um, his yodeling by putting cotton in their ears. And. One thing leads to another that uh, he was gonna plan to like get to cap. Uh, they capture like they, they first they capture Slam. They put him in this mine cart and they get this big chase down the mine. And eventually they get, get outside and learn that Rico, the bounty hunter, he's a turncoat. He was working with Slam and then uh, Buck, Cuba Gooding Jr. He's all heartbroken. To learns that he's a traitor. So now he turns to the he turns uh, he puts his ego aside now and helps the the cows. And releases all the cattle, and he's heading for Patch of Heaven, where that was the only last place he needs to be. 
he needs to piece of land he needs to get. So, so they they ride the train. They get there just they get they just they get there just before Randy Quaid signs it, and he gets he gets he gets his butt kicked basically, and he gets he gets arrested, and <laughs> all as well the farm is bought back, and so the, so Roseanne Bar um uh, Maggie. So Maggie is gonna stay, and so is Buck. He's gonna stay, including two of these uh, steers that uh, they are looking at other cows from before. They're gonna stay too, including that uh, Randy Quaid's buffalo as well. So they're all happy, and they do a little dance at the end, and all is happy. So. So, um, Home on the Range, yeah, probably it's much shorter than usual, but I think it's still a decent one. If you're, if, if anyone's a fan of Western, it's probably not, but, I mean, Roseanne does, does fine what she has to do, work with, uh, Judy Dench, even Jennifer Tilly, but I still don't like her in the Child's Play franchise, I still don't. So, so, so some people, like I mentioned with uh, the previous review, like, John Cena does decent as Ferdinand, so like I said, some people are just better at doing voice work. So, um, Randy Quaid, he's, 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 he's all right. I mean, oh, nowadays, Randy Quaid just, I don't know what he's doing now. So, but, but he was, he was, okay, he was okay as this, as, as our villain. Um, we got Cuba Gooden Jr. All right. I mean, I like Cuba Gooding Jr. as an actor. So he was all right as voicing Buck. I mean, Steve Buscemi has only has only a small role, so. But I think there are our three main voice cast like Roseanne, uh, Judy Dench, and uh, Jennifer Tilly. I guess they're the only three best things of the vo voices of the film. The songs by um, which is so it was the song like, the it's, the score is done by Alan Mer. What's the name? The guy's name is um, Alan Mekin, which he's done the scores on a lot of also other Disney films, including The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Pocahontas, um, what was the other? One? Yeah, including also Aladdin, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules as well. A Christmas Carol. I even did it for the Shaggy Dog with Tim Allen. But Tangled. Even the 2017 remake of Beauty of the Beast. As well. As he's doing for the remake of Aladdin. But um. But the score was, was, was there. I mean the scores in The Little Mermaid. Beauty of the Beast and Aladdin. Are, are, much be are clearly much better scores than this. But I'll say it is a short film, so without the 76 minutes, but without the Chris, it's probably about at least 70 minutes, hour and 10 minutes. So I will give that. It is a, it is a short movie. And this came out in 2004, and this has been the last, like, um, for, like, the traditional animation before in, until five years later, 2009, when The Princess and the Frog came out. But uh, I, still, I still think Home of the Range is still... Uh, a decent one. I, it's, it's not it's not great to me, and but I don't love it. But I still think it's a very decent one. You know, if anyone is, if anyone likes seeing like it's talking cows, you know, saving the day, maybe that's your thing though. But <laughs> but I think I still say it's a decent one. So uh, not that bad to me. So yeah. Want to review this film for some time, so finally I got to you know, and 15 years later, I still think it's a decent home uh, film. But I think that as I said before, no one I think ever talks about this film anymore. I think it's now under the radar from for a lot of people, probably because they're not people are not a fan of westerns. So, but um, 
even just giving mixed reviews on here says it's good fun for the whole family, and back here says a worthy family friendly feast. <laughs> so, but that's my review on Home on the Range. If I had a rate, I would give it probably maybe three. So, in the middle. But yeah. And it says, now whether you think it's probably, it's divided by if you think it's good that it flopped or probably not, I don't know, it's up to you. But, uh, cost $110 million, you know, for a traditional animated film. I mean, Dorothy of Oz, The Legend of, Legend of Oz, Dorothy's Turn, cost $70 million. So, I don't know. But... It's still decent, but thanks for watching, stay tuned on the next movie review, and we'll see y'all later.